Judicial precedent. Ratio decidendi. Ratio decidendi, simply translated, is reason for the decision. In relation to common law, the ratio decidendi forms the legal principle from the case. In the course of delivering a judgment, the judge will set out their reasons for reaching a decision. The reasons which are necessary for them to reach their decision amount to the ratio decidendi of the case. The ratio decidendi forms the legal principle which is a binding precedent. This means it must be followed in future cases containing the same material facts. For example, in the case of Donahue v. Stevenson, the decision was that the claimant was successful in her claim for personal injury suffered as a result of the snail in her ginger beer. The reason for the decision was that a manufacturer owes a duty of care to the consumer under the neighbor principle. This formed a binding precedent. A subsequent case of Grant v. Australian Cotton Mills, had to follow the binding precedent, set in Donahue v. Stevenson. In Grant, the claimant suffered a rash from wearing long johns, thermal underwear, produced by the defendant. It was found that the long johns contained a chemical. The material facts were that a manufacturer had caused a personal injury to the consumer. That meant the binding precedent set in Donahue v. Stevenson had to be applied. A further example of ratio decidendi is the case of Schur v. DPP. The defendant published a lady's directory detailing the services offered by prostitutes. The ratio decidendi of the case created a new crime of conspiracy to corrupt public morals. This was then binding in Canula v. DPP where the defendant published a gay contact magazine. It is important to separate the ratio decidendi from the obiter dicta. Obiter dicta refers to all things stated by a judge in the course of their judgment which are not necessary for the decision. For example, in R. V. Howe and Bannister, the House of Lords held that the defense of duress was not available to murder. This was the ratio decidendi of the case. The House of Lords went on to consider whether the defense should be available to those who attempt murder. They stated that the defense of duress should not be available to attempted murder. They did not need to consider this as the defendant was not charged with attempted murder, so this part of the judgment formed the obiter dicta. In summary, ratio decidendi means reason for the decision. This forms the legal principle from the case. This becomes the binding precedent which must be followed in future cases containing the same material facts. The ratio decidendi needs to be distinguished from the obiter dicta. That is things said which are not necessary for the decision. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.elorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.